Have you ever wanted to do something like this? Hi, my name is Soren, and I'm the trombonist with the Lakes Brass Quintet. Here at the Lakes, I am so fortunate to have the opportunity to play with four other wonderful professional musicians and access to some pretty cool audio and video equipment whenever I want to record a piece of music. However, we understand that not everyone is as fortunate as we are. Finding performers and scheduling time to rehearse can be a real burden, even for us at times. So, a lot of people make what are called multi-track recordings all by themselves. Much like the one you saw at the beginning of this video, though hopefully far better than that one. These come in all shapes and sizes with all manners of instruments, voices, and whatever other musical sounds. Now, you may be thinking, Soren, I don't have a fancy camera and microphone like you guys do. How do you expect me to make a professional looking and sounding recording without all of that? While we do have some pretty great equipment, like these V7 microphones courtesy of SE Electronics, the multi-track recording I'm going to be making in this video is going to be done completely using free software on my desktop, a set of headphones, and my iPhone. Quick note, this video isn't sponsored by any of the brands of the equipment or software that I'm using to make this video. Also, super cool Bulbasaur iPhone case isn't required, but is highly recommended. All right, let's hop on in. Once you find a piece of music, you'll want to create a master track or something to have in your ears while you record. This could be just about anything from a metronome or click just to keep your parts all synced up to a mini mock-up of your entire piece. A couple things that you'll want to keep in mind while creating this master track is make sure that there's something to prepare you for your entrance. Just adding a couple clicks at the start of your recording to set the tempo and stop you having to guess from where you'll need to come in will save you a lot of takes. Also, I would recommend having some sort of mini mock-up of your music in your master track just so that you have something to tune to. One of the worst things is getting to the end of your whole recording block just to realize that none of your tracks are in tune with each other. But if you don't have a preferred notation software or a DAW to create that for you, having a metronome will be just fine. Now that you've got your master track, set up your recording device wherever in your space that you want it to be while you record. Before you start your recording, check the audio levels on your device. The easiest way that I've found to do this is to go to your voice memos app, find somewhere for you to sit in the room, and play the loudest part of your music. Just make sure that those red lines there don't start clipping off the top and the bottom. Once you find a spot for both your camera and for you, you're all set to go. Have the master track play through headphones in your ear so your camera doesn't pick it up while you're recording. Run a couple takes for each of your parts, and then listen back to them until you're happy with what you've got. One tip here, record a few seconds of silence at the beginning of your video. You'll see why later. Also, if you want to make your job easier later when you're lining up your video and your audio tracks, include some sort of cue in your master track. At the cue, do some sort of snap, clap, or other gesture that you can reference in both the audio and video files later. Now, you'll need to separate your video and your audio files. There are a number of websites that allow you to do this, but I'm going to be using a free program called Audacity for this video. To have Audacity extract audio from video files, you'll need to also install a program called FFmpeg. Links to download both of these programs will be in the description. Remember that little bit of silence I told you to record? Find a small section of that silence and select it by dragging your mouse over that portion of the track. Now, click on Effect, Noise Removal and Repair, Noise Reduction, and select Get Noise Profile. Then, select your whole audio track and navigate back to that menu. You can adjust these settings here, but I often find that Audacity's default settings work more than well enough. Feel free to preview your track with the noise reduction applied before clicking OK. 
Repeat this process for each of your tracks, and they'll come out sounding a whole lot cleaner. Now, align your tracks in time, and adjust the volume level so they mix well together. If you implemented that snap or clap earlier, it'll show up as a small spike on your audio tracks that you'll be able to line up now. Keep as much of the audio here as you can, as we'll be cropping it and lining it up with the video in the next step. Now it's time to pull it all together. I'll be using OpenShot to edit my multi-track, but most video editing software has the same functionality that I'm about to describe. Pull each of your video clips in and assign them to separate tracks. Right-click on each of your video clips. Select Separate Audio, then Single Clip, and you'll see this new audio track pop out below each of your video tracks. Go ahead and delete all of this audio, as we're going to be using our newly mixed audio instead. If you right-click on a video and then select Properties, a sidebar will appear with several aspects of the video that you can alter. For this project, the only properties I'm going to be altering are Location X, Location Y, Scale X, and Scale Y. However, feel free to play around with any of the other settings if your heart desires. Now that you can see all your videos, align them in time with one another. Having that snap or clap here may help you out again. Then, pull in your audio file and line it up with your videos. Once that's done, put your playhead wherever you want your video to start. Right-click on each of your clips and select Slice to crop your video and audio tracks. You can do the same for the end of your video as well. Be sure that you select everything and drag it as far to the left as you can. And now, you get to enjoy your recording! Let's check out how mine turned out. If any of you watching this makes a multi-track recording of your own, or if you've made one like that in the past, send it our way, we'd love to see it. Thanks for tuning in, and if you were hoping to see Freddy here instead of me, don't worry, he'll be back soon. See ya!